Hello, everybody on the Sacred in Reality team. I feel, I, I don't feel good about my uh, emotional expression. I have uh, been pondering on why, why did I get so angry? And why am I angry? And it's usually because I don't feel that I am being listened to or being heard or I'm in a situation where I can't do anything to change things and I'm just sitting there watching. <clears throat> and then Darmendra pulls me in, or I know Sophie or Olivier can pull me in with questions about, what do you think, Elijah? And then comes the wrath. And it's, it's hard for me to express what I really see, feel, think in a group because there's this energy field, there's this group space and it's very different right now. I'm in a personal space. I'm just by myself I'm speaking to the computer and it's very different to speak one's truth to <clears throat> an empty space versus to a, an audience. We all know that, right? And some of the stuff that I have to say, I can't say to the group. I don't even know how to say it to a group. So I'm in my personal space. And this is one of the, the maps, the personal space, the one-on-one -on -one space, the group space, the community space, and the sacred space. And we're all discussing, in my opinion, what is the sacred space? And that's such a big question. And every human being on the planet needs to ask that question. You know, what is my, our, your sacred space? And you know, that question is going to go on the rest of our lives. That's the basis of spirituality. That's the basis of religion. So I... In terms of this overall pro project, I question something. I mean, because of the beauty of what Luciel is doing and what you are doing, your team is doing, is that you are bringing the sacred in. You have gone on a sacred quest. You have gone, you know, on a journey that is different than anyone else I've seen in a sense that you have asked the creator, you've asked source, you've asked spirit to show you what is needed at this time. As I have asked, as millions or billions or maybe hundreds of thousands, maybe a few people, who knows how many are asking the creator for, let's say, help or guidance at this time. And there's this fundamental assumption that there is the creator. And, and then it's all of our assessments of what that path is. How do we connect to the source of all that is? And when you've had experiences, when you've had experiences so deep that you can't, you don't even want to talk about, you can't talk about these experiences because they happen and you, 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 you know, and to talk about them seems to minimalize the experience. Some sacred experiences are contained. You don't want to share what it is because it, that's part of the sacred. Part of the sacred is, is leaving the sacred to the sacred. So part of my disconnect is that I don't, I don't want to talk about the sacred in Zoom. I don't want to talk about the most important thing in my life in Zoom with others. And yet part of me goes, well, maybe we should. Maybe this is what we need to do. But then that brings in the, the, the concept of the, or the, the angle or the or that word is around media, around recording. 
around sharing and why when I go to my deeper part, I go, okay, wait a second. Trying to do. I think we need a new media system. One of the biggest evolutionary things that is occurring on the planet at this time is the media. We, we, we've got such a, <clears throat> a jump. Or like when I when I was born, none of this stuff existed. You know, you had a phone, you had you had uh, letters, and that was it. Well, you had TV, you had books. Like the media was contained and it was delivered. It was delivered by somebody to you. And through that delivery, there's a offness, there's a disconnect, there's, a, there's something that gets distorted. And in the current media systems where it's just like everywhere, everyone has the ability to create their own media. This did not exist when I was growing up. Media was given to me. And so as a human being, you know, at my age and going through what I have gone through with my generation, we have seen this transformation we're in the middle of a transformation and the thing about this transformation at the species level is that we don't even know what we're going through how can you how can the pupae know that it's going to become a butterfly and yet this transformation if you put it over a longer period of time and through all the different eyes of all through all the different humans that are going through different pieces and parts of this it's very hard to get a, a collective picture what is occurring on this planet amongst all humans, amongst all the infotech at this time. So we're in the middle of this. And what Liz Ciel is doing, which, which is, I think, pretty incredible, is taking a spiritual approach, not an economic approach, not a political approach, not an agenda approach. All those approaches are out the window when you truly go to <clears throat> spirit, creator, God, the, the, the big guy, the big cheese, the like we're, we're, we have an assumption here that in the spirit, there is a spiritual world, there is some spiritual guidance, there is some intelligence there that we can go to that is going to give us some wisdom, that is going to give us the right path, that is loving us. That is actually in relationship with us. We have, we have the ability to connect to something that is going to affect our evolution. That is going to actually, you know, the, the, it's, you know, we don't know. It's a mystery. And but when you jump into the normal media, is there's no God in media. There's no spirituality in media, or there's no. You know, or the but the media may represent God, or the me, media may represent Christians, or the media may represent Jewish people, or the me, media may re represent Muslim people, or the the media is the way that we understand, communicate, and work together. So the, it's like the blood vessels of the species. It's the information flow of the species is media. And yet, okay, when I was born, someone else was doing it. I had no control. I grew up in this world where the media systems are all controlled by outside of me, this puny little individual. And then as I went through life and read and was absorbed, you know, I, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. We're all learning. I'm not saying that I know anything more than somebody else. I'm just learning. I'm in elementary school, I'm in high school, I'm in university. And I'm, I'm learning, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to live as a human being, I'm trying to figure out how to exist. But at some point in my own learning, I went, wait a second, there's some distortions here. There are lies, there are things that are not true. 
And no one out there is going to tell me which ones are true and which are, I have to figure it out myself. Okay, so I'm going to try to figure it out myself. So people go on a spiritual quest. It's not at a group or, or community or national level. It's at the individual level. Each individual is trying to find out what is sacred, what is God, what is spirituality. Why did Jesus come? Why did Buddha come? Why did Muhammad come? Why, why do all these books talk about people who figured something out, who had some sort of insight, had some knowledge, had some wisdom, had something that got like millions of people over generations after they died to try to be like that one human being? All of these humans are like worshiping a being <coughs> that existed thousands of years ago that did something and said something to everyone saying, you can do it too. Like that's the key here. The key is that there is some sort of process, methodology, way of being, architecture, worldview, something. Something that if you, if you learn it, do it, be it, you will attain some sort of higher level of consciousness. You will attain heaven. You will attain redemption. You will attain immortality. You will attain ascension. You will attain these words that supposedly are pointing to some, something that is better than now because if i was enlightened now if i was you know immortal now if i was if i was it now i wouldn't have to go get it but maybe that's part of the process is you have to realize it in the moment you have to know in this moment i am an immortal being i am christ consciousness i am that i am Now, so we come to the point of Luciel, we come to the point of Elijah, we come to the point of why am I here? I was brought in to affect the system. I was brought in as a contractor. I was brought in as a designer. I was brought in as an architect. And if I'm truthful or honest about this, no one has ever brought me in before. I have been doing my research. I have been doing my own thing. I've been searching for God. I've been on a spiritual quest, let's say for 25, 30 years and bumbling about and discovering things, finding things out, but not in your normal, you know, I'm at university or I'm in a corporation or I'm in a government or I'm in a whatever. No, I'm on my own. I'm just researching. I'm trying to figure out why are we here? What is going on? Who am I? You know, what is the truth? These are all essential questions. And there's probably a lot of people out there who are asking the same questions on the same quest. I don't feel like I'm different from anybody. I do know my history. I know what I've gone through to get to here. And that path is a little bit different than most people that I see. I haven't told my story. I haven't really shared what I did to get to here. But what happened along the way was there were a few spiritual experiences that gave me, <laughs> that changed me to such a degree that I could not interact with society, with my community, with my friends, with my family, with anybody in the way that I see that everyone doing. I can pretend, I can camouflage, I can, I can come into a group, come into a situation and, and just seem like I'm everybody, like I'm like everybody else, but something happened to me. I experienced something which isn't in the books. I experienced something which I've never heard anyone talk about. And because of that, I'm like this 
curiosity meter. I'm trying to find out what happened. Why? What did I experience? And what does it mean in relationship to the, my species? What does it mean in relationship to you know, why am I here? What does it mean in relationship to everything? I can't just continually pretend to go along with things anymore. I have to tell my story or I have to show what I've discovered because I discovered some things. I've discovered some things that I haven't seen anywhere else. Now, maybe other people have discovered it too. I'm not taking that away from them. But I have discovered things that will have an impact on our species. And this is what, if you look back in history, if you look at inventions or inventors, you look at different humans who have invented things, figured things out that affected the whole species. And most of the time it affected them after they died. But I'm still alive. And perhaps what I have discovered or invented is going to come into the world before I die. And that's part of what I'm trying to do. And Luciel being the first group that has ever asked me to actually participate at the design level in something, I, I'm taking it seriously. I'm, I'm honored. I'm like, holy cow. Somehow, somewhere, somebody, you know, and it isn't a somehow or some, it was Gino. Gino, Gino, Gino. Uh, <laughs> Gino was in a mastermind synergy group meeting online <clears throat> put forward by Denise where a group of individuals were online in a Zoom call over a period of time. And I participated in that with another gentleman called Dharmendra. And in that Synergy Mastermind, I met Gino. And Gino was introduced to me by William Graham. And William Graham is uh, the originator of the game of now, who is now wandering, I think, around in North America. And so I, I'm connected to the CL through these online interactions with people that I've met, that I, I respect, that I, I think, wow, there's some very interesting people out there. And so Gino said, hey, why don't you and Darmendra go to LaCiel? They're looking for some people. They, they want some help in what they're doing. And so we met you. We met LaCiel. Me and Darmendra came in and we put forth what we're, what we're working on. And you were guided got some sort of, okay, these guys will work. We will work with you. So for the past year, I have been working with you, but there's others. There's Juan Carlos, there's John, there's Brian. There's five contractors. There's five outsiders. And the thing is, they're male. We're all male. That's something to consider here. You know, if you bring something in to try to make something better, you have to look at what's coming in. And so I'm part of that. And I'm coming with a story. I'm not just coming alone. I'm coming with momentum. I'm coming with the, the, the fruit of my labors. I'm coming with everything that I have done to this point. And like I said, I'm not doing it like I ordinarily people. I have been researching. I've been researching with everything that I have on my own, unfunded, to try to figure out what is happening on this planet. What happened on this planet? Why am I on this planet? And what is the current context of what is occurring? And like I said, there's a lot of people like me, a lot of people researching, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And the difference is with other people is that most people have a life where they, you know, they meet the woman of their dreams or the man of their dreams. They have a family and they create this life together. And then they, whatever happens, right? They go to work, job. I didn't want that route. I wanted the spiritual quest route. I wanted the Jesus, the Buddha, the Muhammad route. I wanted to go, why am I here? There's a bigger reason here. That's what I'm going to do. 
I'm not going to do what everyone else is doing because that's just normal life. I want something that they're pointing to, the prophets. I want, I want what they got. I want, I want, I want spiritual realization. That seems to be what they received. There's something higher here. There's something bigger here. I want that. And so that's what I've been focusing on. And I have to admit that I, I, I don't think I'm that good at it. I, I, I mean, I sort of swerved. I moved off the spiritual path into activism path. And I'm not that good at that. Spiritual activism, bring them together. And I, I, I you know, my end was I was getting defeated so badly over and over again in every situation that I was in that I would, I would try to figure out, okay, well, okay, that didn't work, but maybe this will work. I, I moved into the, the conceptual world. I moved into the realm of the mapping, moved into the world where I had some control because I didn't like being defeated. I didn't like watching this world be decimated continually. The good guys were losing. The movies might say that the good, good guys win, but the movies are full of shit. The movies are part of the problem. The movies are the way to distract the masses from what is actually occurring. And I'm actually a movie watcher. I love movies. I love watching movies. I get into the story. It takes me out of my depression around what I see in the world. I dive into the movie. And if it's a good movie, you become part of that movie. You are in there for that time and you go into the story. And it's a beautiful experience if, if it's a beautiful movie. And I think most of you know what I mean. So I'm not trying to say <clears throat> in my quest that I became like Braveheart or I did something fundamentally incredible, which actually I think I did, but it isn't. It's not like if you look back and look at the set of experiences and all these events that happened, that if you popped it into a movie in two hours, you might go, hey, well, that's a pretty good story. But if you look at your life and you look over a period of a whole lifetime, you're going, holy cow, I mean, <laughs> a lot of stuff in there that I wish hadn't happened or a lot of stuff in there that was hard to experience or a lot of stuff in there where you're not enjoying life. And, and you say, well, am I supposed to enjoy life? Am I supposed to have a happy life? What's a happy life? And then I'm wondering, wait, I went on the spiritual quest, but maybe the spiritual quest actually took me away from what I'm supposed to be doing or what a happy life is. If I had, you know, uh, kids that I loved and a family that I loved and a situation, lifestyle that I loved and all these beautiful things happening. And I've, I've had pieces and parts of that. I've had little experiences where I went, wow, this is what it is. This was everything and all the time. That would be a good life. I, I could handle that. I like that. But we, at least me, I don't know about you guys, but I experience pieces and parts over time. So I get to this point in my life and I can look back and go, well, that was good, that was good, that was good, that wasn't that. Was good. But most of the time, you're doing this or I'm doing this with very little resources. You're not doing this with huge bags of gold and money and everything comes easy. No, we, you, if you go against the grain of society, if you do, don't participate and you don't go for the money, you have to learn how to navigate in a really different way. You have to learn to move between the seams and to be on the edge and be on the outside and not, and to be low key, to blend in, to just kind of exist in a way that's different than if you have your house in a city in a job doing the day-to-day -day things that you have to to survive if you're alone a male at least let's say because i have to take into consideration my own personal context of who i am what i am and how that worked and i know you're going to get to the point i i'm trying to say something here i want to convey something that is going to take some time and just give me a little bit of room because i know a lot of times i talk a lot 
you know, there's a lot coming out and most of the time the people who are around me or the people like if you're trying to teach somebody it takes years sometimes a story may take years to tell the real story of what occurred or what you're trying to convey and people you know who would want to sit around for years you People come into your life and they leave your life. People, So I've had a lot of people come into my life and leave my life. Because I'm not an ordinary person. I, I move to a different city. I go through a set of experiences. And then I move on. I found cities and places and people were very stagnant. And if you're there, you can use it all up in a certain amount of time. Or you can kind of... People who move around a lot, it's because they want more experiences. They want to, 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 they're looking for something. And in society, if you're in one place, things can get kind of stuck because society is stuck. And there's not a lot of room to maneuver unless you have, let's say, a lot of money and then you know how to maneuver. But I, I can't say that I'm that type of person. And the, the irony, this is the irony, is that I've been working on the design of an economic system. You know, who would work on the design of an economic system while broke or struggling? You know, the people who work on economic systems usually have a lot of money. They usually control the whole economy and they're doing their funny business behind closed doors. Those are the people who work on economic systems. But there are people who are at the bottom of the rung, people who are at the lowest level. They want to work on the economic system because they're fucked. But they want to change the system. You want a new system. You want something that's fair. You want something that's, that works. And if you, if you haven't experienced poverty over a long period of time, I don't think you're really going to understand the truth of what it's like for the people at the bottom. Or, or the majority of the people on the planet where every month you got to have some paycheck in or something in to pay the bills or you're screwed or you're going to fall down the ladder. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. And the thing is, when you run out of money, right, it gets worse and worse and worse unless you're a wizard and you can figure some shit out in a weird way. And I was lucky. I mean, I'm, I was very lucky. I got to say that. And the luck comes with the people you meet and the people you know. And that there is a lot of beautiful people in Canada. And what I ended up doing was, was looking for other people who were searching for God or searching for truth. And if I found them, I would spend time with them. And they became friends or, or teachers or students or peers. It's hard to say which one they were at the time. Everyone's got a different idea about where someone is on the path. That's part of the interesting part of this whole idea or story is that the people come into your life at different times and each of them has something for you and you have something for them. Can you figure out what it is? Can you actually take the time to learn who the person is that you're around and what are they about? What do they got? Why are they here? What are they doing? And I, I think because of the structures of society that we tend to have a very surface examination of people based upon how they connect with us, you know, are they family, are they business, are they friends, are they our intimate lovers? Or are they just people that come in and out and leave? Have nothing to do with us. And what I started to do was I started to draw maps of society to try to map out conceptually what the world is in a way that I haven't seen. Because I kept drawing from different sources in business and spirituality maps conceptual maps that were showing me how things are organized i'm very interested in how things are organized and 
I remember when I was like 12 and I, I'd be going through these war magazines and I'd be looking at the way that the different countries organize their different divisions in terms of their main battle plans in the sense of, I mean, the division is the main unit at the level of, of war. So in World War II, the Russians organized their divisions in certain ways, the Germans organized their divisions in certain ways, the Americans and the Brits and Canadians, everyone organized their divisions of about like 15 to 20,000 people in a certain way. And these maps fascinated me. Those were the maps that drew me in because they were the ways that humans were configured for war. And war is the only way that humans come together to do big things. You know, when, when a country's at war, it organizes itself internally way differently than if it is at peace. And my father was in World War II. And he left when I was three. It's so a part of my shadow or part of my wounding is linked to my father and he was in World War II. And I wanted to know about World War II. I wanted to know about what he went through because I didn't know my father. So I just devoured books, movies, everything about World War II and military history, but a lot of focus on World War II. And it's funny because, you know, I'm not a violent person. I don't like violence. And I don't believe all that violence is an answer, but I have studied it. And I have studied war to a great degree. And I do believe in reincarnation. And I do believe that at certain points in, in other lifetimes that I had a lot to do with war, but there's something in me that, that realizes that it is not an answer. And it is, there's something wrong with war. Like the, the, the fact that we're continually at war it's something that the human species has to evolve beyond. Part of my work or part of my desire to understand what is occurring is to figure out how our species can stop being at war. And I know that's perhaps stupid or impossible or an ideal that is beyond reach. But if you, nothing is going to be attained unless you strive for the impossible. It's like me talking to a computer that you're listening to. That was impossible 30 years ago or 40 years ago. Now it's possible because somebody thought it, imagined it, it became real. So I think we can do the same. And I know there's this underlying sort of uh, worldview that we're in the Kali Yuga age and that because of that, war is inevitable because man's in ignorance humans are in ignorance and we're just going to continue to get war because we're at a period in our cycle which, are, which run in hundreds of thousands of years perhaps millions of years that we're in the cycle and you're in the kali yuga that's where things are just harsh but then if you look at the mayan calendar the mayan calendar has dipped and we're in another harsh period for the next, I think, 13 years, if you go by what Carl Kalaman is saying, and that we're at a bottom point. And so we're, we're, there's these larger cycles that, that are part of the evolution of our species. And if we understand that, we understand that we're at points in our history where maybe only certain things are possible and that we have to think in terms of hundreds of thousands of years and, and lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes. That can give us some perspective. That can give us some context. but in the present moment now, in the situation I'm in now, I would like to think that we can come up with something that actually works in spite of all of this outside context, saying it's gonna be shitty for a long time. There are other fantasies or other uh, worldview timelines that say we could have a thousand years of peace. And I like that one. Hey, why not figure something out now? that all of a sudden configures the whole species in such a manner that we're gonna have a thousand years of peace. That's a timeline I like. And if you take that approach, you're gonna have a more positive viewpoint of what's gonna happen in the future. And that's what we need. We need a positive design for the future. We need something to move into 
that we feel good about building now because you know as as everything's falling apart we're building the next system and that's the whole idea of creating a new paradigm but the old paradigm based upon war is actually dying and that we're building the new paradigm that is based upon love and so that's at the essence of the work that i've been doing is how do you design a thinking system that is actually going to help an individual a group or a community to transform itself into an architecture that is actually going to create a good lifestyle for everybody and that's the aim of creating your ideal job within this ideal architecture called a shared knowledge community so when i now if i'm going back to my anger and going back to why i I, I react the way I do sometimes is that if I feel a group does not have the design or the, the ability to actually design that future, that means to me they're, they're trapped in the old paradigm. They don't quite know that. But until you have designed a new paradigm and are living it or seeing it, you can't distinguish the two. Everything is the old paradigm right now. We haven't built the new paradigm. I mean, it is built in pieces and places and people. There are people existing in very sort of, let's say, fifth dimensional ways. They've created something beautiful. They, they, they use their time and energy and they have an example of a, a city or a, a, a settlement or an eco village or a building or a company or a product or a person something that actually represents the new paradigm and i think that's what lucille wants to do lucille wants to build the new paradigm or help teams learn how to come together to build the new paradigm and then have solutions that are new paradigm solutions and those new paradigm solutions need to be connected together and so you guys have 12 teams you guys have 12 people on each team or started with that and that's the plan that's the idea that you guys have come up with and it, it, and and the parallel with me is i have a plan for 12 teams of 12 people to create something called a shared knowledge community so that's where i'm screaming or mad saying i am an architect it means that I have architect a conceptual framework that matches what you're doing right now. It doesn't mean that you're going to use the framework and it doesn't mean that my framework even can be used by you, but there's a chance. Like how many organizations around the world right now are bringing 144 people together to try to change the world? I mean, I don't think many. And yet, you were guided to pick me and i was my guidance said go with these guys i i examined what you had done and i looked at you know your media and it seemed to me these guys are on the right track they're doing the right way the right process i mean if you don't if you believe in a higher power or a creator and you're true to that the part that's the part of spirituality you have to bring that in you have to honor the creator you have to have your own spiritual practices involved in what you're doing and that's the big divorce of the old paradigm where the old paradigm it kind of like it doesn't like there's all of these different worldviews and all of these different worldviews are either competing for attention they're competing for people they're competing for money they're competing and, and it turns into like this war and we don't really acknowledge that but let's say the jewish the christian and the muslim religions have been at war you know for thousands of years and they used to hack each other to pieces with swords and stuff fight battles and do all this stuff that right now are in our history books and we don't really understand what actually happened but now we're in the present moment now and we have Muslims and Christians and, and Jews and, and the rest of the worldviews out there. And they're still fighting. 
they're fighting in different ways, fighting in strange ways, and whether and we see it through the media or we see it through a distorted media, which is part of the war. So we're in this war-based mentality all the time. We're immersed in it. So how do we get out of it? And for me, a lot has to do with the, the media that is being created. Like look across the planet, the amount of podcasts, the amount of videos. If you look at TikTok, if you look at you know Instagram and Facebook, you know it, it's it's incredible the amount of communication and media being created right now. Like it's it's unbelievable if if we go back thirty years, and yet here it is. And so, getting back to the point I'm trying to make is that I believe that the operating system, the inflow matrix that is on paper and a little bit in software is an operating system for the new paradigm. You can custom design any job, any organization and any community with it, but I'm an individual and I haven't done it yet. And it takes other people to participate in it. And those people have to sort of use the tools of the new paradigm toolkit, which are card sets, maps, game boards, processes, and software. That's a unique combination, you know, card sets, maps, game boards, processes, and software. So online and offline. The card sets, the maps, and the game boards are like the, the physical tools offline that the humans use to go through processes, which hopefully connect to software. So we're bringing together these sort of strange aspects into one package called the new paradigm toolkit, which all fit or work with the operating system called the inflow matrix operating system which I've been designing and working on for, again, over 25 years. And the people I've met along the way, you know, had a piece or have a piece of this whole idea, which I, which I call the very secret plan, which is the way that this idea is coming into the world. So the very secret plan is a web TV show. It's a media system. It's an actual web TV show that creates web TV shows. So if you come and I meet you and, uh, and all of a sudden there's a connection, all of a sudden you can create a web TV show just like that. That's, that's the possibility of what's happening right now. So I'm very media oriented. And the, the humor or irony of it is I'm not that successful. Like none of my videos have, have probably more than 20 views and I've got lots of videos that a lot of the plan is is in these videos but no one knows anything about it and most people have no idea what i'm talking about and that's again part of the humor that you're not the first group i've come across you're the biggest group you're the group that i'm connected to right now but i have connected to quite a few other people along the way and each time something happens to make something go off so I understand about things going off and I, I've, I'm participating in this. And right now, this week, the card sets are getting printed here in Canada. It's the first order of 20 card sets from Saskatchewan. So I created these card sets like 10, 15 years ago and I, I haven't brought them into the world. There's a lot of stuff I have, I haven't brought <clears throat> into the world. So here you are, a group of 144 people who have the cards, who have the conversation card sets. You are the first group of people to have the conversational card sets. You also have the value card set, but you're missing the harmony, the synergy, the flow, and the choice wheel card sets. It's There's six card sets that all come together to make the conscious communication card set, card deck, card set. So I'm in the middle of that and I haven't finished the manual, haven't finished the box, still figuring things out. Like I, I've been doing this alone. And, and part of my frustration is I've been doing this alone 
you know, sort of funded by myself, trying to put together this, this massive amount of tools, you know, with nothing, with barely any help along the way. Considering, you know, that other groups and people get millions and billions of dollars to do what? And look at what they're creating with it. And the essence of what I've been doing has, has been, you know, saying to the creator, saying to God, saying to whatever spiritual intelligence is out there, <clears throat> use me as a conduit. Use me as a conduit to assist our species to actually go in a good direction. That is my intention. And so when you set that intention, you're opening yourself to be used in the service to the species as a conduit for whatever comes through, but connected to your intention. So we all have this incredible power to say to the creator, use me to do your big work, man. And the thing is, it happens, something happens and, and you have to sort of, that's the sacredness is that amazing things happen, but it isn't like a, a joy ride. There's a lot of other things that happen that, that kind of suck. And you got to put up with a lot of things. And it creates a residue, builds your shadow, and all of a sudden you're some pissed off old guy like me, who at some point blows up if I, if I feel like I'm going through another situation where I'm not being heard because... You know, I've listened to a lot of people over a long period of time. And I know if someone's listening to me, I know if someone's paying attention. Sometimes people think they're paying attention and they're not. They're actually not listening. They have no idea how to listen to you. And that can be said for all of us, right? Listening is a, is a very, very good skill. But you have to, like, how do you listen? How do you take that information in? How do you then apply the information? How do you then bring it into your life? How do we bring it into our life so that we can work effectively, either as an individual, a team, or a community? Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want to apologize because I, I I think we lose our temper, we get angry for reasons, and hopefully it, it alerts the team, well, something is happening here. And, I, and it's like, I want to find the best way to interact with you. I want to find a way to bring the tools so they're useful. I want, I want the tools to be used to assist everybody. And that's the irony. In that it's a communication system and if i don't communicate well it isn't going to happen shouting and complaining in the sacred space <laughs> isn't probably the best way but at that point in time my best way was silence because i thought if i don't have something positive to add then you know just participate because usually i would just leave i just disassociate from people and groups if I think they're not listening or I'm not really having an effect or I, I don't agree with the methodology of what they're doing and how they're doing it. So I can't imagine anyone listening this long to this. This is a major uh, download. But I just, I think it'll work out. I think it'll work out. We all just need to just keep making forward progress. And it's then deep down, we all got to surrender. We got to surrender something higher is guiding us. And that something beautiful is going to come out of this. That I really, I really like everybody. I love everybody. I think everyone has a, a great heart. They're here for the right reasons. And I want to bring in the concept of a web TV network that the media coming out of this whole experience is what is going to be the thing which does the most transformative 
work on the planet and that each of us is a conduit for that each of us has something beautiful to bring into the world and if i look at you know the people that are assembled here and uh, their beauty and their intelligence and their wisdom it's a powerful group it's a very powerful group and you've done you know great work to get here and you're doing great work and we're all in the middle of this and i don't want to sort of uh pee in the cornflake so to speak be a wet blanket <laughs> be all the convo killers at once which probably i can be so thanks for listening i guess that's probably got that off my chest and i'll put this into a podcast much love to you all